Have you ever been in a meeting and were asked a question that you didn't have the answer to? Or maybe your boss stopped by your desk and needed some information you just didn't have. Well, not having the answer is not a problem, but responding poorly when you don't have the answer is a problem. In this video, we're gonna cover three things not to do in that situation and four steps on how to respond well. Coming up. Here are the three typical responses people have in the situation that you want to avoid. These should sound familiar. The first one is people freeze up. They, uh, uh, they forget their words. They, they fumble around. They're not sure what to say. They look like a deer in headlights. The second type of response is where people just make something up. They're not sure how to respond, so they give the best answer they think they currently have, which they know is maybe not totally true. And the third kind of response is people just shrug their shoulders and say, I, I just don't know, and they leave it at that. So now we know we shouldn't freeze up, make stuff up, or just shrug off not knowing. Now here are four steps on how you can respond well when you're asked a question you don't have the answer to. Make sure you pay attention to step number three that came straight from one of our clients who's the executive vice president of a large multinational company. He told us this while we were delivering training for his executive team. And this guy knows what it means to be successful. All right, let's get into the four steps. One, admit. If you don't have the answer, admit it. No amount of verbal jujitsu will convince your audience otherwise if you don't actually know the answer. Knowing right now that if it happens in the future where you get asked a question and you don't have the answer, that you'll be okay, that is a very empowering belief. It'll help you keep your cool and not freeze up, which wastes your audience's time. Two, commit. Commit to getting an answer. It's okay to admit you don't have the answer when and only when you commit to getting the answer. So in step one, admit, you communicate that you're open and honest. In step two, commit, you communicate that you're proactive and solution focused. Most people do not like committing because then they're being held accountable to their commitment. So don't be like other people. Be one of the few that will promise and deliver on their promise, and then you will stand out from the crowd. Three, time it. Set a deadline. Committing without a deadline isn't commitment at all. Deadlines are what separates dreams from goals, should do's from must do's. So give your audience a deadline and ask them if that deadline works for them because your answer is only useful if it's timely. Four, do it. Phil Knight was right, swish, just do it. If you don't follow through, you'll lose more credibility than the person that just shrugged their shoulders and said, I don't know the answer. If you do follow through, your credibility and your influence will get a huge boost in your office. So, what does that look like? It can be as simple as this. I don't have that information in front of me right now, but let me get back to you by the end of the week. Does that time frame work for you? The four steps. Admit, commit, time it, do it. Question of the day. Which one of these four steps was new to you? Make sure to share your answer and connect with others in the Lead With Words community in the comments section. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for more content just like this, and we will see you in the next video.